A15 Sports Podcast back at you this week. Um, week one reactions for our teams. Talk a little bit about college football, um, Oklahoma, Miami. Jake wants to talk about the Illini. And we'll give our predictions on Thursday night football tomorrow night with the Chargers at the Chiefs. And Sunday we're going to go live before the games and we're going to give our predictions for Sunday Sunday's games and Monday's games. So um, to get started, Jake. Start talking about your Dolphins. They got a good win, a good win this week against New England, twenty to seven. So, the Dolphins um, did everything well, I think, from defense, offense, special teams. Um, I what I was more, I was more concerned about seeing Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle how they would do together, and at first, it seemed like Tua was targeting Tyreek a lot, which we kind of, everyone kind of assumed because it's his first game. But then Jalen started getting some touches, and um, the call that really changed the game, I think, was the fourth and seven with, like, 25 seconds left from halftime. The Dolphins, I would say they were at midfield. They um, decided to go for it on fourth and seven, which was shocking instead of punting. Mm-hmm. because if you don't get that, the Patriots are almost in field goal. I mean, it was a whole swing of – it was a whole – that was a game changer. I mean, I can't believe he made – I can't believe they went for it. It yeah. really shocked me. And let alone they went for it and scored on it. They yeah. didn't just get the first down. That was bold. Did you see what Tyreek Hill said about McDaniel? Yeah. He says something about his nuts are going to be hanging down to the – Need a wheelbarrow to carry him around. That's crazy. It was a crazy call. It really was. And it was – it was basically that was the game. Yeah. Um, because the Patriots couldn't move the ball. I mean, they looked like dog shit. They really did. That offense was terrible. They never got in a rhythm. And um, Tua and Bill Belichick. Tua is four and zero versus Bill Belichick in his four starts. Um, I got the, another stat: the Dolphins have won eight out of the last ten versus the Patriots in Miami. Um, I got a, a couple other stats here. Um, which I think is kind of crazy because the Dolphins haven't been to the playoffs since 2016, but they, they said a stat was there's only three AFC teams that have more wins than the Dolphins in the last 36 games, and that's the Chiefs, Bills, and Titans, and then the Dolphins are fourth on that list. So for some reason, they're winning and just not getting in the playoffs, which kind of sucks. Yeah, and I, you know, after watching that first game, I know um, a lot of people overreact to week one, myself included, which I'm going to say here in a minute about the Packers. But um, after that performance and just what I think the Dolphins could become, I really think they have a good shot at the wild card, even though I didn't pick them to make it this year. Um, I just, I really think they have a good shot at making it. The defense looked good. Understand that the new, uh, you know, New England's offense didn't look very good at all. Yeah. But I well, just, I think much, Miami's I mean, got a lot of weapons. How much credit do we give the defense for making the offense not look good i mean you're right you got to credit them a lot yeah now i just i also think new england just played bad and i don't want to get too far into i don't want to get too far into hyping up the dolphins because their next three games are brutal Mm -hmm. um if they can go one and two in their next three games that would be good i know i hate saying one and two because it's bad but you play the ravens and then you're at home versus the Bills, and then Thursday night football versus the Bengals. You you could easily go 0 and 3. You could. I 100% could, go 0 and 3. I could see you guys going 2 and 3. 2 and 1? Uh, yeah, yeah, 2 and 1, 2 and 1. Because I, I didn't, obviously, the Steelers have a tremendous defense. Um, the Bengals did not look very good. The line, which was supposed to be much improved, did not look very good either for the Bengals. Um, so we'll see. I think yeah. that's a winnable game for Miami. I mean, if Mitch Trubisky and the Steelers can win there, I mean, I think two on the Dolphins should have a chance. Mm-hmm. And I'll just – I'm going to say some of these stats. Tyreek Hill had eight receptions for 94 yards. Jalen Waddell had four receptions for 69 yards and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And Tua was – she had 270 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Um, those stats kind of don't really jump out at you, but when you have a great defense, you, they don't – they might not need to jump out as much. Mm-hmm. So – and the Dolphins, Teron Armstead, in his Dolphins debut, had 35 pass blocking snaps, and he only allowed one pressure. 
So that's pretty elite, um, which is saying Tua had a pretty clean pocket, and um, they did their job. Yeah. I mean, they, they look good from top. I mean, I don't have any complaints. They look good from top to bottom. Maybe they could finish drives more, mm-hmm. but they everybody was making plays. Yeah, so they I'm, look good. They look good. Um, and Mike McDaniel's first, he didn't look nervous. He just looked like he belonged there. Yeah. Um, and, and I think they're only going to get better as the season goes on. Shout out to the Dolphin fans for actually showing up and selling the place out and not letting as many – New England fans, as there normally are, mm-hmm. there was still a good amount, but a lot of times it's half and half. I I bet you it was 80-20 Sunday, which is great. The and, only um, – I mean, yeah, everything was good. The only big thing, the only big loss I have to say for Miami fans this weekend was probably whoever left that grill on and yeah. ruined like five or six cars. Yeah, that's – that's if you didn't see yeah, that somebody's or hear about State that. Farm. Um, a anyway. fire broke loose in the – tailgating lot and 12 cars were burnt literally i mean they just they weren't there yeah i mean they were there in pieces but i mean i've never heard of that that's just crazy i hope they were all patriot fans cars to be honest with you but they probably weren't hopefully they got good car insurance um anyways we'll jump into the packers here obviously um i'm sure most people watch the packers game it was on national television after the bears beat um san francisco um and the Packers just flat out, I mean, there was a few good things that were shown, but they just looked terrible on Sunday. I mean, there was a lot of plays, and, you know, there was a lot of plays um, that didn't go our way. Obviously, the what would have been a 75-yard touchdown pass to Christian Watson to start off the game. Rodgers drops an absolute dime right in his hands, and he dropped it. Um, that was bad. I, that I think that would have changed the game completely. That would have made it 7-7, right? Yeah, right off the gate. Um, you know, you take that, you take um, – we get stuffed um, from the one-yard line there. A.J. Dillon gets stuffed. I mean, you just look at some of those things, and I think we only lost 23-7. to seven. So, you know, a few of those things go our way, and it's 23-21, and we're driving down the field in that under a minute there. Instead of Jordan Love being in the game, it's Rodgers. It's 23-21, oh, and we're going down. he was in the game. Yeah, at the last 50 seconds. So we're going down the field um, with the chance to win there if a few other things go our way. Um, another thing to add – on a negative note, I don't know what the defense was doing, um, and I blame this mostly on the defensive coordinator, Joe Barry. I don't know why, uh, you know, you pay Jer- uh, Jair Alexander all that money, and then you don't have him guard arguably the best wide receiver in the league, which he was just absolutely tremendous this weekend. Um, luckily, he was on my fantasy team. But he had, you know, nine catches, I think, um, almost almost 200 yards receiving and two touchdowns. He was dominant all over the field. Uh, You know, you should have had Jair shadowing him all game. Instead, they didn't. I don't know what they were thinking. There were times where Preston Smith was lined up on Justin Jefferson, and that's going to be a win for Jefferson every day of the week. Um, So that's I don't know what's going on there. LeFleur has got to come up with a better game plan. That was really embarrassing. Uh, With this offense, the wide receivers being, you know, what it is, the offensive line, um, they they looked okay at times, uh, but really just not that great of a performance so far. Obviously, we're down. Bakhtiari and Jenkins, um, which I don't think we'll get them back against the Bears. I know they practice uh, limited today, but I think we'll get Lazard back, but not those two guys. So we'll have to – and I think Lazard coming back will be huge for um, Aaron. How good offense. did Minnesota look? I think Minnesota looked really good. I think they were be- – they looked beatable, though. Yeah. I think. But they did look really so good. So, like, you think that's going to – is that the second-best team in the division? Um. Week one overreaction, I'd put them as the first best team in the division. The defense for them looked really good, and they have Jefferson, Thielen, um, Irv Smith Jr., Delvin Cook, and Cousins look pretty good. But when guys are that wide open, you know, I would put them at one right now. Um, and going forward, I, I don't think there's much. I don't think there's much to that week one game. I mean, there's sixteen more. They did this last year. They have a his like I think a lot of people said they have a history of playing bad in week one. Um, I just I don't I don't think there's much to it. I mean, maybe there's a little more cause to concern this year because he doesn't have his his guy Adams. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I mean, he's Rogers is just going to have to make plays. And yeah. He's, and, he, and he's going to have to keep firing to those guys, and eventually they'll catch him. And they're going to have to make plays. Yeah. 
That's a fair ball. And uh, just lastly, one thing I want to add, the uh, rookie we drafted out of Georgia, um, the linebacker, Quay Walker, he looked tremendous out there. He was running around, hit-sticking guys. Um, he looked great. And I can't wait to see how he improves this season. He's a really bright spot for our defense. Uh, hopefully they turn it around. I expect us to come out and dominate against the Bears, especially after an embarrassing performance. Um, I look forward to being there Sunday night, me and Jake, um, my sister, my dad. I think it's going to be a great game. And we'll get into that Sunday when we talk about our – As long as it's not sloppy like it was in Chicago. They played in a monsoon. It's supposed to be sunny in 75. Oh, thank God. Okay. So it'll be good weather. But with that being said, um, we'll hop into a little bit of college football. So first we'll start off with my Sooners. Uh, they got off to a slow start. They were only up 7-3 to three against Kent State at half. And then they came out. And they just looked really good. Defense was sound. Um, you know, in the first half, we only scored seven points. And after that, uh, we scored the 33 unanswered when we were down 3 nothing. Is that 2-0 and or 3-0? No? We're 2-0. and We didn't play in week zero. But uh, this week, we got Nebraska coming up. Obviously, Scott Frost just got fired, which I'm surprised. Because if they would have kept him another three weeks, then they would have had to pay him like $7.5 million instead of 14 or 15 so, obviously, just that bad that he had to get canned. Um, but, you know, the defense for Oklahoma's looked really good so far. I've seen um, some good things from the offense with Gabriel. Mims, obviously a stud. Marcus Major getting those red zone touches and scores. Eric Gray, some of his cuts have been tremendous. Um, Reggie Grimes on defense has looked um, really good. Billy Bowman's shown some good things. Uh, Jalen Redman, very good player on the, on the line for defense. And I just, I really like this team. I think there's a lot to be said. We're ranked sixth now. I think um, we have a good shot at making the playoff. We control our own destiny going forward. So I like, I like what we're looking at. And just one thing I want to touch on was the defense has only allowed one touchdown this far and a total of only 16 points. And we ranked first nationally in tackles for loss and third for sacks, which is something that we um, had have not done in a very long time. And I think it's with, obviously, the addition of Brent Venables and his defense. So that's awesome. And I think we got a lot going for us going forward. And lastly, as far as the game against Nebraska, I think we win that game handedly. Is that that's, that's this week? Yeah, 11 a.m. At Nebraska? At Nebraska. I, I, I don't even know. I don't know what to expect. From anymore. Nebraska or us? What's up? I don't know what to expect from Nebraska anymore. They Every time – Every time they uh, try to put a football team together and get a coach, um, they just – they can't figure it out. And I think they gave – Scott. I think Scott Frost has had too much of a leash. I, th- I think they've given him too much. Yeah, they should have fired him last year. Um, he, he just continues continues to lose easy games that they should have. I mean, I'm not saying you should go out and any game's easy, but they should beat Northwestern and they should – 99.9% every time they play Georgia Southern should beat Georgia Southern at home. Yeah. And, you know, Nebraska's storied, storied college football program, and it's just been really bad for them for probably the last I decade, mean, decade, a little longer. They're awful. I mean, I, Illinois goes there in a couple of weeks, and I, I think – I Illinois should walk out. I don't know win. why they shouldn't. Yeah. So my um, prediction for that final score there is 42 Oklahoma, 14 Nebraska. So I got that marked down as a win. With that being said, obviously Miami got another win this weekend. Um, they looked pretty good. Jake, you want to get us started talking I, about they, that? They, they looked like shit too, like I would say Oklahoma did till halftime. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times these teams are feeling these teams out, and these smaller schools, they, they can play with you for a little bit, but they just can't do it for four quarters, and Miami was too much. Um, and that which now this sets up a huge game Saturday – I think it's at eight Eastern time, which would be seven Central time. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm. I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but they had played at Texas A&M, um, who just lost to Appalachian State. Embarrassing loss, especially after those things so, that were said by. I mean, I, 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 A&M's favored, but there's no reason that the University of Miami can't win there if Appalachian State can. Now, I'm not saying a and is going to play that bad again. Maybe they won't, but. Miami should be out. It should be a good college football game. And if Miami wins, they're three and zero, and um, things are looking up for them. But there was college football this weekend was just 
insane. If you just a lot of upsets. if you had if you had derbies or if you had if you were Parlays. betting, just throw them in the air and throw them in the garbage because, like we said, you had Appalachian State over in A and M. You had Georgia State over Nebraska, and Southern. the biggest one I think, yeah, yeah, the biggest one was Marshall over Notre Dame. Yeah. Um. Say what you want. The Cubs are absolutely raking right now. It's five to nothing. The Mets are playing for a division and are about to get swept. And, you know, just one thing I want to add about Notre Dame. Obviously, um, I think it's one of those things where they just played to their competition. They played pretty well against Ohio State, and then they play against Marshall, obviously played down to their competition. They lost their quarterback. Yep, for the season. And looking forward, looking, you know, going forward with their schedule, I don't even know if they're going to win four games this year. I mean, they got Cal this weekend. They play Clemson. Yeah, they got Clemson. Um, I'm not, I can't remember who else they got coming up, but Stanford, but they have some, um, they play at USC. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to win four games this year. They might, they probably won't make a bowl game. It's going to be a tough first year for Marcus Freeman. He hasn't even won a game yet. I just, so I just, we ain't going to have to deal with the his Notre Dame men are out this year. They're out. Um, there's always next year when everyone there's, is it going to be next? It's probably going to be a couple of years before where they had to do the 12 team 2024. But I think maybe 26. Yeah. So I, I think they're out this year. Yeah. There's, um, they have no shot. Zero. No. Even if they, even if they went out, if for somehow they magically went out, I still think they're out. No, they're done. They're so, done. Um, one thing I want to add about the Miami Texas A&M game. I also think Miami's going to win. Uh, I like what I see from them. I like what Cristobal has been bringing to the table. The energy seems different there. Um, they win this game. They move into top 10. And then you really start to think about can they run the table and win the ACC Coastal, which they I should. Think they could. They got they got two more. They have three tough games remaining on their schedule. At A and M, at home versus Florida State, and at Clemson. At worst, they have to go two and one. Because you might play Clemson again in the ACC uh, yeah. championship game. Um, they they probably will, but. This this A and M game is going to be a test to see where they're at, and I think, but I think Van Dyke and the guy, I think they can do it. Yeah, I agree. Van Dyke's a stud. Could be a Heisman. Could be a Heisman winner this year. If not, on where next it goes. year. Yeah, he didn't have an impressive game Saturday, but you know they won, so it gets it don't get looked at too much. But. Mm-hmm. And one thing I want to say about A and M is they had so much hype going into this year with their recruits, and I. You know, their recruits and um, just Jimbo, you know. Yeah, they always do. They're the number one recruiting class. Yeah. And you lose at home to Appalachian State in front of 95,000 people. It's it's a joke. It's every every way you look at it, yeah. it's a joke. And I, I think it was humbling for them because they came into the year. It's, I think all of it stems from last year when they beat Alabama at home. I think that was like, oh, oh my yeah. God, we're Texas A&M. Like, Every it happens most of the time where a team will lose a game during a season and things move on from there. But A and M needs to get humbled. They got humbled. And one thing I want to say about Jimbo is they're done. Yeah, they're, they're probably out. done. I think they're out. Yeah, they're done because Georgia, Alabama, you're not beating. Yeah, so anymore. like you you had a, maybe you had a chance to get in if your one loss was versus one of them and you went out, but mm-hmm. now your one loss is Appalachian State. No. Yeah, I in hot all take. credit all credit to them. You know, they almost beat North Carolina the week before in one of the greatest or one of – I don't even know what you would consider that college game. It was insane. But two weeks in a row that they almost beat two power schools. Mm -hmm. And they should have. Yeah, they should They're one and one. So They probably should be ranked, really. (laughs) They could Um, be. One thing I want to add about Jimbo just to finish off. So through 50 games, um, Texas A&M's previous coach, Kevin uh, Kevin Sumlin, was 36-14. and And Jimbo's 35 and 15, and Jimbo's getting a lot more money. Um, I don't think that Jimbo will get fired this year, but hot take, I think if he doesn't make the playoffs this year and he doesn't make the playoffs next year, I think he's fired. Yeah, I, it, It's just how it, you either produce or you're get, you're gone. And, and he, he hasn't brought an SEC these type of school. Yeah. Yes. You don't, they don't give you six or seven years to build a program. No. You don't even, they don't, they didn't get, they didn't give, they didn't even give Lovey that at Illinois. So, yeah. So just to, finish this topic off i got miami winning this game uh i think jake's got miami too yeah i think they're gonna win i don't think they're gonna roll them but i think they're gonna win yeah it'll probably be a dog fight so 
align eye, Jake. Let's get into yeah, it. Yeah, ILL, they look pretty good over Virginia. They actually dominated from everything besides the, besides the first couple minutes when DeVito threw that opening opening um, pick, and then they fumbled. But Illinois looked great. Um, they won 24-3. to I got a lot of stats here about Chase Brown, who is absolutely just terrorizing defenses. Let me see where it's at. So it says Chase Brown leads the nation in yards per game and total yards. I think it's I think he's averaging 165 yards rushing per game for total yards. To, no, probably total. Yeah. And um, he's just he's terrorizing defenses. I mean, you can't. I don't know if it's because. Illinois, I, which I said weeks ago, they're going to be run heavy. They're literally going to run the ball down your throat, and if you can't stop it, you're screwed. If you can, we're going to continue to run it down your throat. And that's what they've done. They've also – Tommy DeVito's done done pretty good. He's in, six, in three games, he has 620 – I think 622 yards and six touchdowns in three games. So that's probably what? Averaging what? 200 and – About 220 yards a game, 210. You know, that's that's okay. You're going to – tugs. That's okay, especially when your running back is averaging 165 yards a game. Mm-hmm. You're going to win a lot of those games. They should be 3-0. and they Yes, they should be 3 in Austin, Indiana, which is going to haunt them. But they played Chattanooga. They're off this weekend. They played Chattanooga next Thursday. They're going to win. They're going to be 3-1. Three, three and one. They'll be 3-1, and one, and they play at Wisconsin. Wisconsin's now, beatable. We Say what, what you want. They just lost at home to Washington State. Yeah. Um. It's Brett Belima's old team. He's got, you know, a lot of people are going to be there. He knows. Where's it at? Is it at it's Wisconsin? at Wisconsin. And they're probably going to lose. But it should be a competitive football game. I had them at, I had them at four and one after the Wisconsin game. They're going to probably be three and two. Yeah. So not too far off. Still on track to make a bowl game because they play Nebraska, who looks like shit. They play Iowa. Who looks like absolute shit? I, Iowa, Iowa cannot. Score. Iowa just lost at home to Iowa State, and they just look bad. Iowa's bad, and that game's in Champaign. So it's just it's you can see six wins. I can see eight. Yeah, I can see Illinois competing for the the West title because all these teams are garbage. This so far they've looked like garbage. Yeah, I'd say Illinois looks like one of the best teams. They at least have an identity. Mm-hmm run the ball down your throat because you're not going to stop us. Yeah. But they look pretty good. I agree. So, ILL, um, yeah. We'll see. So, next we got, you know, Thursday Night Football, Chargers at Chiefs. Um, I would probably take the over in this game. I would imagine it's going to be a shootout. Um, Mahomes and Herbert uh, both looked very good on Sunday. Um, you know, Yeah, I got the Chiefs. The spread's four. It's at Kansas City. I would probably take the over, and I would probably take the Chiefs to cover. The Chargers aren't going to have Keenan Allen. And are they going to throw to Mike Williams? It's going to really take throw the ball to Mike Williams. It's really going to take a MVP type game from Herbert to win, especially what we've seen from the Chiefs last week. I mean, they looked unbeatable, and if that's how they're going to play, the AFC is basically going to run through Arrowhead again. Yeah, the over under is fifty four. I would still take the over. Yeah. So. Um, I I'm gonna take the Chiefs in this game. Uh, the Chargers, very good team. They don't have Allen, but they their defense looks much improved. The Chiefs have a very good offensive line. Um, he's got he doesn't have one specific weapon like he did last year with Tyree Kill, but obviously, um, Travis Kelsey probably slides into that role. Well, and I I'll just say this: I think I seen that the Chiefs are missing Bucker, which is their kicker. Yeah, he's gonna be out. And after after watching week one, there was about eight or nine missed field goals throughout the games. So that I mean that could be a big factor. Yeah. I mean Justin Reed will probably be there. The kicker. Steeler the, the the Bengals missed two game winners. Well, they missed the extra point to win. Yeah. And then they missed the field goal in overtime. But mm-hmm. then Pittsburgh banged one off the upright too. Mm-hmm. And then they finally made one. So that was three missed field goals. In overtime, yeah. Until the fourth was finally made. Where where else were there some missed field goals? Um, uh, well, the well the the the, 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 the Broncos Titans, last night. The Titans, which I wouldn't have kicked that field goal. 
who was it? The Titans and Giants. Yep. The Titans missed a field goal from like 46 to win. So the Giants won. Mm -hmm. And then in the Denver game, which we didn't even talk about, that horrific. Yeah. I mean, that was a game management. I can't. You have three timeouts and it's fourth and five, and you don't call. You don't call a timeout to consider running a play with Russell Wilson, who you paid how much? 200? Over 250 million. Just bad. Bad decision. And it was a 64 yarder. Now, he had the leg for it, but I mean, I think you got a better shot of getting fourth and five, then calling a timeout, and then kicking a field goal. And Russell Wilson showed up. I mean, he had 300. How many yards did he have? He had over, I think he had over 300 yards. He probably did. Yeah, he had a he good really game. Well. Judy the thing is, is good. they got shut down at the one like three times. The fumbles. Yeah. With Williams and uh, now that ain't, that is not the coach. You know, that's just on the players. But still, that last minute was on the coach. Yeah. And I don't know if he had a first game jitter, but. And what I don't understand is oh, oh. how Geno Smith came out and just looked. And he looked Geno great. Smith he looked was great. Like eight he, for, he was eight for his first eight. Yeah, he looked really good. I think he started out even 13 for 14, passing, two tuds. I mean, he looked really good. Um, I don't know yeah. if that will continue. But... I just got to give a shout-out to the 12th man. That place, there were a lot of Bronco fans there, but it, it didn't matter. That that 12th man is really a factor. And I don't ever want to play there because those fans are relentless. They're ruthless. They booed Wilson, and they're just so into football. I know they cheer. They basically cheer first, second, and then on third down, they're stand up and yeah. they all scream like they're like bloody murder. Yeah, that's that's how NFL games should be. I think. Yeah, um, I agree. You pay that money to go there. Some people drive a while. Like have fun. Like let's not be at church. Yeah. And um, so just a shout out to the twelfth man. I, yeah. It really is a weapon for mm-hmm. them. Broncos country wide left. <laughs> that that loss that loss could in the AFC that just one loss could haunt you at the end of the year and that yeah. one loss could haunt them especially in that division. Yeah, especially that division. So I think I mean I will say Williams looked really good uh, running back Javante Williams looked really good. I think they're going to end up being a good team. I don't know if it was yeah, like emotions or yeah, what the Broncos happened. Are gonna, but, I, I think they're going to be fine. They play who do they play this week. Uh, I think they play Houston. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think so they play Houston. They're gonna be that one should be a win. They're gonna be one and one. Yeah. So um that's all we got for today. I have a few Cubs, I have a few Cubs notes for all you Cub fans out there. Um I heard today that which where did I write it down at? So I heard today that the Cubs are about 90, 90 I'm 95% sure they're gonna spend. Next this off season, they're very, Turner. they're very interested in Trey Turner and Carlos Rondon, um, which he would probably be your number one, and then Turner would probably, I don't know, you he him and Horner would be up the middle. That would be a tremendous up the middle. Those guys both remind me of the same. They play the game the right way. They hit, they hit, they hit for above average. They hit for a little power, but just the getting on base. It's very important. It's very important. And um I I think the Cubs are gonna I think they're gonna spend it and I think we're gonna be happy. Um that'd be good. I still think even if you add those two guys, you still need you still need another big piece to yeah, really I, contend. I think well, you're still gonna hopefully they can if they would re sign Contreras, you would have You're not gonna get judged. You you would have well, I'm here in San Francisco. Is going to be in the making for him, but he's going to hit sixty home runs your, this year. Your one would be, yeah, that's crazy. Your one would be Rondon. Your two would probably be Stroman, and then like Hendrick Skill. I don't know if Hendrick's still there after this year. I just I, I can see a decent five next year if they go out and get a starting pitcher, but it's all going to depend on if they get a couple free agents, big names, um, and and they should. I mean, let, let's not. Cherry coat nothing. They need to spend the money. They have it. Yeah. Um. And hopefully next year is better. We've said that before. Um, we're gonna be saying it again this year, but we'll see. We'll see. And hopefully they do sign those guys. Yeah. The, and the Cubs are going for the sweep tonight. They're up six nothing on the Mets. 
which I couldn't um, believe they beat DeGrom last night. The Mets, DeGrom got out pitched by Adrian Sampson. Go figure. I, yeah. They're up six. They just scored six runs in the first inning. I don't know what's going on in New York. If it's an ep, if it's another Mets collapse, which they kind of do late in the season, if Atlanta's going to run away with that division, Atlanta seems to not want the division either. Who's going to take it? One of them's going to win it. Um, so I think they're going to sweep. They're up six nothing. And I agree. Um, another note on this date in 2008. Carlos Zambrano threw the Cubs' first no-hitter since 1972 when Milk Pappas threw it. Um, it was at Wrigley North, which is Miller Park. It's not Miller Park anymore, but it's where the Brewers play. Now, you might ask, why are they playing the Astros at Miller Park where the Brewers play? Well, that was when Hurricane, was it, what would it have been, I Katrina? No, not Katrina. Katrina happened in New Orleans. Hurricane. That was Anyways, there was a hurricane that made – made that game not be be able to be played there. So Milwaukee was open, and they played it there, and Big Z threw a no-hitter, and the Cubs went on to win the division that year. They had the best record in baseball. So, yeah, just a, just a fun fact. No, that's good. That's good. I like you threw that in there. Caught me off a little bit. I remember that game a little it's, bit. Yeah, and, and to believe it or not, the Cubs filled that place. They had like 29,000 people there. It only holds like 38 or 39. So that's absolutely tremendous. It's probably now, short notice. I know the Cubs were in a the Cubs were going to win the division and go to the playoffs. So more people were like it was a good time to be a Cub fan, but still the Brewers can't get that there now in a wild card race. So that's pretty pathetic. Yeah, you can get tickets at uh the gas station or at subway. your local subway where you get free free subs if you buy tickets to the game or something like that. Yeah. Um so yeah, go Cubs always. Bad or good. Lastly, so um, Sunday we head up to the game uh, in Green Bay. It's Packers Bears. Me and Jake gonna do a live. If anybody wants to join, uh, we'll not sure yet what time we'll go live. We'll let you know on our social media accounts. I would say it's, it's we're gonna try to get up there before the noon games because the Dolphins play at noon, and I yeah. want to watch them. So it's probably gonna. I would say between ten thirty. Between between anywhere between nine and eleven. Yeah. We'll. They'll, we'll probably be trying to do something yeah. about the picks. and We'll go live on YouTube. We'll I'll, let everybody know. We'll both be pretty amped up. It's two pretty big games. I mean, we're going to find out where the Dolphins are at, and we're going to find out if it is time to panic. In Green Bay. In Green Bay. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be time to panic if the Dolphins lose because Baltimore's great. They've been great for years. They have Lamar Jackson. If the Dolphins can go up there and play with them, I would – I don't want to say I'd be happy because I hate to lose any game, but it, it would you could at least say, okay, you know, maybe the Dolphins can hang with some of these teams. But if the Packers lose at home to the Bears, it's time to panic. It's time to panic unless it's a shootout, unless it's a great game and you see Rodgers throwing dimes and these guys are catching them. But if it's a bad game. In every game in the NFL is normally close, but this is a game where the Packers – should come out, and I even seen something on Twitter today. The Bears think that they're way better than us. Well, which, that's good. Which is, yeah, is what it is. I don't Let know. I don't know that. where they're much better than us at. Maybe a few places on the defensive side of the ball, but you could argue we have a better receiving core, and our yeah, receiving core is not very good. They both good. don't have a receiving core. We right? have better because running backs. I've heard from both fan bases who who are the quarterbacks going to throw the ball to. Yeah. So, sure, the Bears have Mooney, right? Yeah. Um, but. But. What's what's the spread? I think it's my. I think it's seven. I think the Packers are are given seven, which I think's. I don't know. I'll tell you a I think it should be four. I think seven's a little. I I don't know. Just 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 based off of what I've seen from both teams, I I just don't know. Man, that I it's, can't. It's wait. actually it's actually um the Packers are favored by ten minus ten. Holy shit, ten. Yeah, that. I, I I don't know I don't I know I don't know if we'll big. win by ten. No, I I, I, I think, think it's so. too big. I, I don't know. I might be wrong. The Packers might roll them. Yeah, we but, might. I think AJ Dillon um, has a good game, but I think Aaron Jones has a better game. He only got nine touches um, against Minnesota, so I think he's going to get a hell of a lot more touches. And I think we're going to run for probably 150 to 200 total yards of rushing. And I think Rogers is going to throw for 200 plus yards passing. 
I think Big Bob Tanyan's going to get a touchdown and probably 50 yards receiving. How about? And I think Watson redeems himself this week. So, but yeah, on um, on Sunday we'll be live. We'll give our predictions for Sunday and we'll talk a little bit more. About how about, how about this stat, which I thought was pretty cool? If you've ever, if they've ever, if this makes sense to you, the Dolphins. Where did I write it down at? 75% of the Dolphins' snaps on offense was motion. Do you, do you, do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, had a guy there's in always a, yeah. someone, which is kind of – that's a lot. Yeah. And that's typically what they do in today's um, NFL. Is, that's what you know, we've see been what waiting the linebackers for down there. Are doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, McDaniel's a good coach, knows how to scheme. So That was – yeah, that's where I got it. The Dolphins used motion in 75% of their snaps. I also got that the Dolphins have now won 25 straight home games when leading at the half, which is the longest active streak in the NFL. Coming at you with some stats That's impressive. Today. That's impressive. Here's a stat. Since 2009, the Packers have only lost to the Bears four times. Yeah, can you name them all? The losses? Uh, it was um, – Well, one was at Lambeau on Monday night, right? We lost to them once um, that year they made the playoffs. A long time ago, like when, like no, in 2010, just, just recently when they made the playoffs with Mac, uh, with Mac and they missed, then they missed the field going. goal. Yeah, um, I I can't tell you the other times that we've lost to them. I feel like I, I, feel like I, I should, but I just can't. But yeah, I just they've owned they've kind of like how the Dolphins own the Patriots in Miami. The Packers have kind of owned the Bears in both. I know the last three years we haven't lost to Chicago. Yeah, what year was it that? The Packers were down big, or the and Packers Rogers were down out. big, and Rodgers came out after half, and they just rolled. I think it was 2018. It was the year the Bears made the playoffs. Week one, Rodgers came out, and he oh. was like, my knee. And, yeah, yeah, he came out and played tremendous, and somehow we right. won that game. Hopefully you guys like some of those stats that a lot of people might not know about, but I really searched Twitter for about an hour and found, Stat found man, a lot Jay of Car Car. Yeah, well, coming that, at you. Some of those dolphin ones are just like how there's only three teams that have won more games than the Dolphins, and we have no playoff appearance to show for it. I, it doesn't even make any sense. But yeah, you, yeah. Well, just recently, you know, you guys have lost all those games to start off the year, and then you get hot at the end. So maybe yeah, that could be. Which let's get hot and stay hot. I hope so too, float. for your sake. Float. So with all that being said, uh, make sure to like and subscribe, leave comments below, and please join the live on Sunday. Um, and we'll put comment. out, we'll yeah. put out that we're going live. Yeah, so we'll let everybody know. Hopefully, we'll get we'll get some people in a it. couple yeah. hours at, a couple hours ahead of time. And hopefully, you know, if you guys want to leave comments below, we'll try to get to them. Um, maybe if you have questions about the NFL, or maybe um, if you want to know our predictions on a certain game. So. We'll let you guys we'll let you guys know and we look forward to doing our first live. So everybody have a good one and go Packers. Fins up.